Previously on Tales from the Twenty Side. I, I guess our only option is to go through the door. I'm going to try the door. Well, I will go straight for rock art. I will slash him with my claws. Be gone, Chadney. Rip his throat out. See, this is a reason why you're not allowed in the lodge. We have a strict no pets policy. Rokar strikes into you, Otto. You feel your energy almost sucked out of you uh, and you collapse the ground unconscious. Tell you what, I'll cut you a deal. Leave the dwarf with me. The rest of you can go free. How does that sound? Rolling. All right, okay. I'm rolling. Sorry about again. that. That's all right. <clears throat> and let's do a clap after three. One, two, three. There we go. That sounded really in time with everyone else, mm. which across Zoom is really fucking worrying. I know. <laughs> but I mean, it, we had. I think we literally had this conversation like two episodes ago, and, and, and it worked out fine, so you know. I think we have this conversation every single time to be honest. We do. It's because we've got nothing else to talk about because secretly we hate each other, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Uh, anyway, with that said, welcome back, <laughs> listeners, to Tales from the Twenty Side, uh, Pathfinder Second Edition Let's Play podcast. Uh, my name is Dom, and I am your games master for this game and many other games on this podcast channel. Uh, and I'm joined by our regular cast members of Mr. Stu Jackson. Hello. Mr. Neil Kelly. Hello. And Mr. Darren Mafucci. Hello. Good evening, folks. How is everybody doing, aside from the obvious melting from the, the heat of the sun? Hot. That we seem to be living inside. It's hot. It's hot. Yeah. It's hot. It, it's a bit warm, isn't it? It's a bit. It's hot, and I want a good night's sleep. <laughs> yeah. On the subject of it being hot, it's probably worth uh, apologising to listeners in advance of if there's any ambient sound. I think all of us are having to have our windows open mm. while we're recording this. I mean, we're recording it in the evening, so it's a bit cooler and a bit less noise than normal. But if you get ambient sound like people screaming or blowing whistles, particularly from my end, um, I apologise. I'll try and edit it out where I can, but... I mean, the alternative is that we all just kind of sweat and die in our in our in our homes. So mm. I think uh, I think that's probably not not preferable. Well, not preferable for us. <laughs> Listeners <laughs> may have a different opinion. Tweet mm. us and let us know. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, so yeah, how's how's everybody doing? How's life in late lockdown? Um, wow. I, I think um, I think officially we're not in lockdown anymore, are we? It's all. Um... Oh yeah, it's yeah. kind of in, in name only at this point, isn't it? Yeah, officially it's all over, I think, but um, we all know it's not. <laughs> yeah. I'm still well, on it's not furlough. For... Mm. It's not for you, Neil, you've just been on holiday. I have, but I went to a place that's safer than here, and um, I wouldn't have gone if I hadn't paid for it last year, and, and the wife pressured me a bit. <laughs> that, that, I have to that, say. That, that, that does remind me, um, Neil and Darren, how was, how was your respective times away? Uh, and obviously... Darren, you went, went up to Nottingham, and Neil, you uh, sequestered yourself away on a very sunny beach, I saw. I did. I did. Went to France, and uh, and now I'm back and locked down for the rest of the year, as far as I'm concerned. But no, it was lovely. It was nice. We were able to keep ourselves fairly isolated. People tend to be quite good at wearing masks out there, and um, it wasn't a badly hit region anyway, so I think um, it was as safe as we could have been. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Mm. And did did you find your way around okay? Yeah. yeah. You weren't lost in France. 
Okay, getting yeah, blank looks from Darren. No, bo- 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 Bonnie <laughs> it's Tyler, a very old song. Bonnie Tyler didn't come with us this time. Um, we, we 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 tend to tune the radio to uh, there's a radio. I mean, it's quite hard to find radio stations that play music out there. But we we always tend to settle on nostalgia because of our age. And of course, um, now nostalgia is is far more recent music than we're used to. But it still means you hear an awful lot of um, Michael Jackson and Tina Turner. Sounds like a but. good old radio station. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I don't understand this because 90s music was like two or three years ago. So Yeah. You know, it's two or three new, plus 20. Yeah. But I know, that, I know that the BBC will no longer play Michael Jackson now that he's no longer at an For, for um, reasons. Yes, for mm-hmm. reasons. Well, I mean, the, the double standard they applied with Michael Jackson and Gary Glitter were accused of pretty much the same thing. However, Gary Glitter was no longer um, a going concern financially, so he was punished, whereas Michael Jackson, they continue to play his music, and I guess now it's kind of time expires, and the BBC won't play it anymore. However, Nostalgie FM in France has no such qualms, and they will play him all day, every day. There we go. Awesome. And uh, yeah, Darren, Darren tell, tell, tell us a bit about your uh, lovely trip away to Nottingham. Did you, did you have a good time? Yeah, it was nice um, to see people. <laughs> it was nice to see friendly faces. Um, and I, I got to see my nan for a little bit. She's not been very well. Um, it was good. It was good. Um, just yeah, there was lots of catching up with folk, and sort of all socially distanced and sensible. But it was yeah, it was nice. It was much needed, I think. I, yeah, you cer- you're certainly sounding a bit more chipper since you since mm. you went up there. Mm. So good to good to hear you you all had a had a good time. Mm. Um, Anyway, I think that's enough talking. Shall we head back into our game? Hang, hang on, hang on. What about you, Dom? Me? Yeah. What about me? I mean, you're still doing your uh, Fortnite the Friday things with Cornerstone, aren't you, on YouTube? Yes, I am. I'm still doing my, my uh, music streams. Um, the next edition is going to be slightly different because I'll be away in Canuck. Um, so we're pre-recording it and we're going we're gonna to release that uh, on YouTube at the designated time. Um, and it's 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 actually kind of a good thing that that one is pre-recorded because um, my computer blew up last night. We had, we had a lovely storm uh, sort of roll in that I thought w- was going to clear the air, and instead it's cleared my wallet as I have to pay for a new uh, for, for a new power supply. <laughs> mm. When you say Canuck, do you actually mean Canada, or is there a place called Canuck? Uh, no, Canuck Canuck Chase up uh, up up near Derby. Oh right, okay. So not Going Canada then. Yeah. Going, going camping with some friends, uh, sort of having a mm. having a fake social distance festival of our own, <coughs> since real festivals don't don't exist right now. No, uh, that sounds like yeah. a plan. It'd be nice. That sounds like a plan. Oh, uh, there was one other thing I uh, did need to mention before we get going today. Um, it is game related, so don't worry too, don't worry too much. Uh, just want to say a big shout out to uh, Rovergurg on our Discord channel, uh, who made us aware that uh, we've been doing surprise attacks ra- ra- wrong uh, for quite some time uh, in this game. Uh, and we've been doing them wrong insofar as they no longer exist in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Um, so I, I've re- read up on the various rules surrounding that and sort of ways to do. Uh, sort of surprise attacks and do them properly with an initiative. Um, so going forward, we're going to try and get that a bit more right. Uh, but thank you to R- Rovergurg on our Discord server, and um, that's also a good, a good opportunity to plug the Discord server. So just uh, if 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 you, if you want if you fancy coming and joining our little community, um, sort, of, sort of chatting with us here and there, asking us questions, um, correcting us on rules, whatever else you may wish to do, uh, pop onto Discord and just do a search for Tales from the Twenty Side. Uh, or alternatively, send us a message on Facebook, and we'll send you a an, an, a link to get you in there. Or Twitter, we're on Twitter too. We are <laughs> plugging all the social medias tonight. Tweeters, Twitter, <laughs> Tweeters, Twitter, <laughs> Facebook as Facebook, Instagram as mm. Instagram. <laughs> I don't think that's how any of that works. Can can you can, can you tell? <laughs> is it Tweeters Discord? <laughs> bookers. I mean, well, you know, with most of us being actors, yeah, just bookers. <laughs> that too. Anyway, uh, enough uh, pomp and circumstance out the way. I think it's time we got back into our game, folks. Mm. Mm. All right. So, bringing us back in, um, Brother Amos, Alwyn Templeton, and Otto von Niederschläger, uh, having concluded the first part of their adventure in 
uh, the border wood by slaying the being known as Tevnotten. Um, have found themselves at a bit of a a crossroads in their journey. Um, they, were, they, they had to decide whether, whether or not to press on uh, through this swirling magical portal, as instructed by the, by the dying man who had strode out of it, um, or to return back to the forest uh, to, to deal with some unfinished business uh, in the form of Captain Rokar and uh, the bandits he leads known as Rokar's Raiders. Uh, if you've been keeping up to date up to this point, it will come as no surprise to you uh, that the party decided that uh, the threat of Captain Rokar was too great to leave unchecked in the forest. And so they decided um, to return to the High Sentinel Lodge and put a stop to him. Uh, a battle ensued. Uh, they defeated um, certainly seemingly the last of Ro Rokar's human uh, accomplices. Uh, leaving just the, uh, the captain himself and two of these uh, icy skeletons uh, that he had created uh, as, as bodyguards, um, sort of holding down the fort in one fight, in, in, a, in, in a last stand of sorts. Um, the battle was was kind of going what, this way and that. Uh, Otto had uh, been struck down uh, and had been then subsequently picked back up again by Olwyn, and as we bring ourselves back in, uh, you are inside uh, Rokar's kind of office area where you initially kind of spoke with him. Uh, he's kind of tucked into a corner, sort of surrounded on two sides by Brother Amos and Chardonnay. And the last thing that he said to you before we finished, um, with, a, with, a, with, with an unsettling aura of confidence about him, was, Leave me the dwarf, and the rest of you can go free. And that is where we start our game. Uh, so staying in the same initiative order as we had previously, uh, Alwyn, it is your turn. Yes, okay, come on the new... Oh, I fuck that. Um, Chardonnay, kill. That's my first action, is to instruct Chardonnay to kill. Okay, so you instruct Chardonnay to attack. Um, are you? I've done some reading on animal companions, Stu. Are you? Are you instructing Chardonnay to support or to attack? To attack. Okay, lovely. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, Chardonnay gets two actions, doesn't he? He does. Yes. Uh, so the first one. Uh, is crap. Uh, that's going to be 12. Uh, 12 is going to miss. Uh, once again, uh, Chardonnay snaps towards Rokar and gets a mouthful of this thick, shaggy fur cloak he's wearing. Okay, and uh, the second attack, and <laughs> for the record, Paizo, I find it really strange that jaws are not agile, but hey, <laughs> that's the way it is. Uh, 13. Uh, not much better. Uh, sort of Ch Chardonnay pulls back for a second strike, uh, and Rokar uh, sort of sneers at, at him uh, and twists deftly away from the attack. Okay. Um, is there space for Alwyn to get up close and personal with Rokar? Uh, not really. Um, so Rokar is kind of tucked into a corner. There's a window on his left. Uh, in front of that window is Chardonnay. Uh, directly in front of Rokar is Brother Amos, and the square, uh, calling it a square because that's, that's what it is on the map, um, mm. the space kind of between Amos and Chardonnay is occupied by a large oaken table. Right, so with Alwyn's two remaining actions, uh, he would like to move into the square behind Chardonnay. Uh, drop the rapier for a free action, or was it the bow he had? I forget which. I don't remember. I think it was the, it was the bow. It was the bow. So drop the bow for a free action, and draw the spear. Okay, you can. That's and that's going to end your turn. So you move around the table, um, sort of uh, against the wall behind Chardonnay, uh, dropping your bow as you do so, and you take out your spear, and that ends your turn, Orwin. Uh, so, end of Alwyn's turn. We're back round to Brother Amos. <clears throat> and as a reminder, bro bro Brother Amos, um, you are currently under the effects of Bane. Uh, so, your attack rolls all take an additional minus one penalty. Additional minus one. 
<laughs> the lead on my pencil just snapped. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's all right. Ho hopefully not a sign of things to come. <laughs> okay, so um, <clears throat> I think I'm, I'm just going to use my flurry of blows. All right, so uh, first action to make two attacks. Fourteen. Uh, Fourteen is going to miss. And a seventeen. And seventeen is also going to miss. Um, oh oh you're dear. So you're sort of um, swinging towards Rokar. Um, you, perhaps it's because you're getting a bit tired where you've been walking all day to get here. Um, you're telegraphing your strikes just a little bit and he's easily able to dodge out of the way of them as you swing for him. Um... I shall uh, try my powerful fist. Okay, roll another <laughs> attack. Nine. No, once again, uh, it's just out of reach. You've got one action left, brother Ramos. <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm going to take another swing at him. Okay, roll the attack. 24. 24 is enough to hit. So with a, with a last gasp uh, lunge, you clock him across the jaw with your fist. Roll the damage on that strike. Two. Two points of damage. Uh, plus your strength. Ah, uh, four then. Yeah, four. Four points of damage from Brother Amos there. Uh, that's the end of your turn. Uh, Otto, we're round to you. Uh, you are still outside the room, and uh, these two skeletons uh, that were also in the lodge are kind of barreling up the stairs towards you. Hmm. Yes, I think that's what I've got to deal with, really, um, rather than try and engage Captain Rokar. Um, perhaps it, if I produce an electric arc at the two skeletons. Okay. Um, also, just give me an intelligence roll really quickly. Or a wisdom roll, sorry. A wisdom roll. Just... A wisdom roll. That'll be a seven. A seven. Okay, don't worry. Continue as you were. Oh, I so... know why that was happening. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's because I edit the podcast. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, I'll, I'll shoot my electric arc at these two frozen skeletons who are coming up the stairs towards us. All right. Uh, so that's a reflex save for both of them. Yeah. And what's your spell DC? My spell DC is... 16. 16, okay. Uh, so... I've got a 10. to fail. And a 15, so that's two failures there. Uh, so roll a d4 and add your charisma. Um, that comes to a total of four. A total of four. Okay. Um, as you release your electric arc, it dances across the bones of these skeletons. Um, they don't seem to be particularly affected by it. Oh, right. Shit. Didn't work last time either. Didn't work last time either, no. <laughs> no. I got nothing else. I'll, I'll draw my hand crossbow my last go. You already had the crossbow out, and I think it was actually loaded. Okay, in that case, I will shoot the nearest uh, skeleton. All right, roll the attack. And that's a natural one. Oh, roll a d6 for me, Neil. D6. Three. There we go. Uh, bear with me one second whilst I go and get my critical fumble cards. <laughs> <laughs> Otto's in pretty bad shape. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, gosh, apart from uh, Amos smacking Rokar 1, we're all doing a bit. Mm. A bit of pants in this. Yeah, show. this this adventure could end very shortly. It could. It could indeed. 
So let's give these a little bit of a shuffle. Uh, so, uh, Otto, as you um, loose this bolt towards uh, towards the skeleton, hmm. um, as you loose the bolt, um, uh, the <laughs> string of the crossbow uh, kind of reverberates onto itself. Mm. Um, and although you lift uh, the crossbow kind of point blank range right between the eyes of this skeleton um, the string of the crossbow comes loose as you fire it and uh, it causes the bolt to skitter um, straight up in the air and embed itself in the ceiling Um, you suffered an amazing miss and you are stunned one stunned one stunned as in actually physically Stunned, uh, yes. or just, so, just, uh, just, I can't believe it. It's kind of, it's, it's, it's kind of like you sort, of, you sort of look at this happening, and you cannot believe that you've just done that. Right. Um, so yeah, so you you are stunned one, uh, which means on your next turn you lose one action. Okay. Looking at that shot, I can't believe it's not better. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, end of that your could t- have been a lot worse. <laughs> could have been a lot worse. <laughs> end of your turn, though. Uh, we are round to the skeletons. Um, obviously, this it's kind of single file on the stairs, and where you are, you've got a decent choke point. So the one at the back uh, sort of can't actually get up the stairs towards you, uh, but the one at the front uh, lifts its claws up, as they've been doing uh, the whole time, and it's going to swing for you. Hmm. Okay, uh, so we've got a 19 to hit. <clears throat> yeah, that hits. Liberating step, if I'm close enough. Uh, let me see, are you? Um, 15 foot. You are not close enough, Owen. Oh, shit. Sorry, mate. <laughs> That's all right. I had it coming. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so Otto, you take uh, three points of slashing damage as these claws rake across you, and okay. there's a burst of uh, sort of freezing energy as um, uh, you take a further point of of cold damage. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's got not much else to do, so it's going to attempt the same thing twice more. Uh, we've got a 15 to hit, which I think is a miss. Just, just a about. miss, yeah. And a... Oh yeah, 15 and a 14. So so it's, it strikes you once with its claws, and the second two, uh, you, you you kind of step back just out of the way as it rakes for you a second okay. and third time. Uh, that's the end of its turn. Uh, we are back round to Rokar. Um, oh no. Um, <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Ach, nein. He's he's turned out to be a right bastard. Mm. <laughs> and it was such a lovely person <laughs> initially. Yeah. You think yeah. you know someone? <laughs> 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 Can't even trust bandits these days. Mm. What's the world coming to? <laughs> uh, so uh, Rokar looks at looks at um, the two of you and the wolf who are harrying him at the moment, and uh, again with this sort of still confident sneer across his face. Um, he sort of says, "No, all right then. The three of you, it is." Um, uh, this familiar wave of black energy uh, washes off of him. Uh, Olwyn, I need you to give me a will, will save, please. Okay. Uh, that is sixteen. Sixteen. That is a failure. Um, mm. Again, this this black energy washes off of Rokar and presses against your mind, and this time it does find a way in, and uh, your vision just gets a tiny bit supernaturally foggy. Uh, you are under the effects of Bane. Uh, you are taking minus one to all your attack rolls currently. Okay. All right. Um, after that, uh, he takes his short sword. Um, let's see where he's going to go. Okay, uh, turns to Chardonnay, who's kind of snapping at, at his heels, uh, takes his short sword, um, and he says, uh, I guess I'll start with your pet. 
Um, and as he does so, uh, you watch as the sword itself seems to swirl with this um, sort of black and red energy. Um, and he slashes at Chardonnay. Okay, uh, we've got... Uh, where's your sword gone? Okay, wow. Uh, that is a 28 to hit on Chardonnay. That is a critical hit, and can I do liberating step? Uh, you may do liberating step. Hmm. <clears throat> Okay, uh, so uh, Chardonnay takes as this sword carves into her, uh, him, sorry. Uh, eight points of slashing damage. Is that after liberating step? This is before. Before, okay. There, there, there is an and coming. Mm-hmm. We're all waiting. And Chardonnay also takes. Oof. Uh, Thirty points of negative damage. Oh, um, even with liberating step, Chardonnay is dead. Okay. Uh, so he sort of, as as Rokar brings this sword up, crackling with uh, sort of black energy, he strikes down at Chardonnay. Uh, who seems to be leaping up to make an attack and carves Chardonnay sort of right across the, across the belly um, and Chardonnay um, sort of crashes to, to, to the ground and lies there breathing very, very shallowly. Mm. And, and uh, as, as Rokar strikes the wolf down, uh, he, he, you see he, his smile breaks and, and he laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> Uh, Olwyn, we're around to you. Dick. Uh, <laughs> Olwyn is the, obviously the, going to... Uh, what the dick? What that smile off his face? <laughs> <clears throat> Want to avenge Chardonnay. Um, okay, uh, so first thing will be to poke him with the spear. Alright, roll the attack with your minus one. With the minus one. Uh, is 15, so that's not going to hit. It's not. Uh, second action, try and attack again with the spear. Oh shit, that's a natural one. Uh, D6 please, Stu. Six. Okay, sure. you're fine. Um, and last action, uh, I'd like to do battle medicine on Chardonnay. Of course. Um, roll that medicine check. Uh, 22. 22, that is a success. Um, so roll the healing there. 2d8, is that right? It's 2d8. Uh, 7. 7 back to Chardonnay. Uh, and you see, uh, as, 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 almost as quickly as Rokar strikes him down, uh, you thrust in with the spear a couple of times, uh, and then sort of drop to your knees and sort of, um, kind of, put Chardonnay back together as best you can in the time you have available to you. And, uh, yeah, sh sh Chardonnay's eyes fl flicker open. A sense of relief washes over Alwyn's face. All right. Uh, end of Alwyn's turn. Uh, we're round to Brother Amos. Oh, God, that was stressful. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to go for a flurry of blows again. Okay, roll the attacks. Nineteen. Nineteen is going to miss. Twenty-one. Oh, twenty-one just misses. Ah. Oh. You you sort of have him uh, again with a nice little, little uppercut on, on the jaw, and um, he whips out his free hand and just palms it to one side of the last possible second. Uh, two, two, two actions left, Brother Ramos. Um, <clears throat> powerful fist. Uh, OK, 
Okay, roll the attack. 24. 24 is enough to hit. And... Six. Six points of damage. And uh, last action. Powerful fist again. Okay, roll that last attack. Yeah, it's minus eight this time, isn't it? Uh, minus nine because you're under the effects of Bane still. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that misses. Okay, uh, so again, you sort of go into into a sort of flurry of punches, uh, just trying to strike him any way you can. Um, the first kind of glides off of his off of off of off of his cloak. Uh, the second. Um, is absorbed by the armor he's wearing. Uh, the third, he's not fast enough to get out of the way of, and the last one, uh, as mentioned, he just sort of palms it to one side and it goes. It doesn't hit him. Uh, that's the end of your turn, brother Ramos. We're round to Otto. Well, I, I am still stunned. One. You are. Uh, so, so you lose your first action, and then you uh, you stop being stunned. Right. So I've stopped being stunned. I will reload and shoot my crossbow. Right into the face of the nearest skeleton. All right, roll that attack. Uh, what do I add to it? I add just the uh, the range strike. Uh, the range strike. That's correct. So that's sixteen. Uh, sixteen is not enough to hit uh, the, the the bolt. The bolt hits the bone, um, and the, the bone seems seems to be a bit harder than you're expecting. Oh. Uh, you, you might have expected it just to kind of shatter on impact, uh, but the bolt glides off it, leaves a bit uh, of a scratch in the in the skeleton. I will reload. All right. Wasn't that your two actions, load and fire? It uh, was. Oh yes, it was. Yes, yes. It uh, was. Load and back, shoot. We're back round to the skeletons. Uh, again, one of them. At the back is kind of struggling to get through to you, Otto, but it can't because its mate is in the way. Mm. Uh, however, the one at the front is going to... Uh, well, the, I mean, these things are pretty mindless. Uh, it's, it's just going to attempt to attack you three times. Uh, so we've got a 9, a 15... Miss. And a 25. Uh, 25 hits. Okay, um, it's, it's quite hard. Uh, so, oh, was it, was that a critical hit? Uh, I think so. My armor class is sixteen. Oh, and that, that, then it's not a critical hit. Oh. A hair off a critical, but not a critical. Mm. Uh, so, Otto, as it rakes into you with these three cl uh, sort of flurry of three strikes. Oh no, hang on, I've not applied MAP to that. That might be less. Um, yeah, sorry. It was a 9, a 15, and a uh, 17. Right. So 17 still hits, I believe. Still hits, yes. Um, 16. Sure. I, I have toughness as well, don't I? Uh, you do. That just gives you more hit points when you level up. Right. Uh, either way, six, yep, 17 just hits. Uh, so uh, as, it, as it rakes into you, uh, you take three points of slashing damage. Uh, and again, uh, you feel this freezing aura bleed into you, and you take an extra one point of cold damage. <clears throat> All right, uh, we're round Good. to Rokar. Uh, Rokar uh, sort of looks at you, picking the wolf up, up again, uh, Olwyn, and sort of, sort of says to you, you know, you should really learn to quit whilst you're ahead. And as for you, it turns to you, Brother Ramos, and brings his short sword up to bear. Uh, so we've got a, a 31 to hit, Brother Ramos. Yeah, that definitely hits on 19. Ah, so that is a critical hit as well. Uh, you take... Bad damage roll. Rating step. Okay, you can do. What's what's the damage resistance? Uh, I have to remind myself. Uh, isn't it my my level or double my level? Uh, 
sorry, I should know this in advance. Everything's sticking to me. Uh, <laughs> two plus my level, so five points. Okay. Uh, so as as Rokar strikes you, brother, brother Amos, uh, looks like he's going for quite a nasty gut shot. Um, you would take six points of pit, of slashing damage, um, but as uh, as Rokar is kind of cl closing in on it, Alwyn uh, puts a bit of magic in the way and stops the worst of it. You only take one point of slashing damage. Oh, thank you very much, Alwyn. You're welcome. All right, and he sort of sees this, and there's a there's there's an there's an aura of frustration uh, about him as as he sees this. Uh, he's going to go for a second strike, uh, and that's going to be sixteen to hit. No, it misses. I'm nineteen. Okay, he rushes towards you the second time, and this time you see him coming a mile away, <laughs> and you duck under his arm as he as he swings as he swings downwards uh, for his last action. He is going to. Uh, you see, he sort of settles back into himself, and he uh, again clasps his holy symbol. And once again, this wave of energy uh, kind of drifts off of him. Uh, Otto, I need you to give me a will save, please. Otto. Yes. Oh, okay. Will save. Um, it's a D twenty, is it? That's correct. Yes. Two. Two. Yes. What well, do I add to that? Uh, add your will save to it. Eight. Eight. Oof, okay. Uh, that is a critical failure against that Ooh. spell, but I don't think that has any extra effect. Uh, in either case, uh, you are now affected by Bane, and uh, all your attack rolls are taking an additional minus one. Hmm. Just checking to see if there is a critical effect there is not so don't worry all right so i'm still on my feet still on your feet yes uh, but obviously you're taking not penalties much, to I? attacks and hmm. uh, that's going to end his turn olwyn we're round to you so first action will be to command chardonnay uh to get his revenge okay uh so for Chardonnay's part, presumably the first action needs to be to stand up. Uh, yes. Uh, and we'll then make an attack. Okay. Um, oh, just remind me, is Chardonnay suffering from Bane as well? Uh, yes, he is. Right. Uh, all, all of you are now suffering from Bane. Right. Okay. Uh, oh, that's crap. Roll the two, so... Um, no, that's eight isn't going to get anywhere. It is not, unfortunately. Uh, so Alwyn will attempt two pokes with the spear then. Okay, roll those attacks. Mm. Uh, oh, 23. 23 is just enough to hit. Do you know what? I had to roll the 19 to get that. Uh, oh, max damage though. Uh, eight points of damage. Eight points of damage. Ha... Mm. How did you have to roll an 18 to get there, Stu? Uh, so the spear, I only get uh, a bonus of 5 normally. Uh, because I don't get any strength bonus. Oh, oh so it's just your um, proficiency you get. Oh, uh, I yes, see. so okay. it's just proficiency. Minus 1 because of the bane uh, brings it down to plus 4. Gotcha. So yeah, for 23 I had to roll a 19. Alright, uh, mm. a nasty strike regardless. Uh, and yet, yeah, final action, uh, we'll attempt to do the same again. Uh, is this going to be a minus one? Uh, so 13 is not going to cut it. It's mm -hmm. not. You go for a second a second lunge with a spear and uh, it, uh, it goes wide. Okay. All right. Uh, Brother Amos, we're round to you. <coughs> well... <coughs> Time for a flurry of blows. Okay, robbers attacks. Eighteen. Eighteen's a miss. Twenty-three. Uh, Twenty-three is enough to hit. Roll damage there. Eight. 
eight points eight. of damage. Mm. Nasty. Okay, so two copycat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two actions left there, brother Ramos. <sighs> I will do a powerful fist. Okay, roll the attack. Twenty-three. Uh, again, twenty-three is enough to hit. Uh, three. Three points of damage, uh, and. Uh, as you sort of land a couple of these strikes, uh, Rokar is starting to look quite bloody. Uh, so, so you can see him starting to pant a little bit as, as, he, as, as he takes another strike in the chest that sort of knocks the wind out of him a little bit. And... Powerful Fist again. Okay. But minus eight. There, that's a miss. Okay, and you go for, you go for for, for, for finish up uh, strike perhaps to put him out completely, um, and uh, you over overextend it, and your fist thumps into the wall behind him. Okay, uh, end of Amos's um, turn. We're round to Otto. I think I will try and produce flame. It's okay. about time. <laughs> yes. Okay. Gets me out of most situations. And you're aiming for the skeleton right in front of you? For the skeleton right in front of me, yes. All right, roll that attack. I've got to say, halfway through a recording and this, and you haven't cast flame yet, that's got to no. be a record. Sure. I've <laughs> thrown, I have thrown a two. Oh, no, unlucky. Uh, <laughs> so your total there, I think, is eight, isn't it? And what do I add to it? Uh, is it charisma? It's your spell attack. Oh, spell attack. Spell attack is... Um, Yes, eight, six, so six plus two, eight. Eight is in total. Okay, uh, that unfortunately, again, is a critical miss. Uh, these things mm. are harder to hit than perhaps you first thought there, Otto. Um, I, I'm not having my best day, I have to say. <laughs> okay, uh, either way, you've still got an action left. I will reload the crossbow okay. on the off chance that I'm still on my feet to use it. Okay. Uh, so, and with that, we are round to the skeletons. Uh, again, the one. Oh, now this is important. Which one is going first? Uh, okay. So the one, again, the uh, the one at the back uh, kind of struggles to, to push past and just can't quite do so. Uh, but once again, the one in front of you. Uh, lifts up these horrifically sharp looking claws, Otto, and swings them down towards you. Mm hmm. Uh, where is it? There it is. Uh, oh, 24 to hit. Yes, that hits. Okay, uh, you take six points of slashing damage, and as the, again, as, as the cold seeps into you, you, you take a further five points of cold damage. And Otto is down. Okay. So as the skeleton rakes into you, Otto, um, it's just enough to enough to knock the wind out of you, and you find yourself falling backwards, um, and you lie still on the ground. Hmm. Uh, it's then going to use its other actions to move in. Uh, so um, Amos, you you hear behind you a thud as you hear something hit the ground outside the office door, and then you see striding in through the doorway. Um, one of these skeletons. Okay. Uh, and as it comes up behind you, it's going to attempt to rake into you with its claws. Okay, we've got a natural 20 there for 26 to hit. Yeah, that hits. <laughs> okay, uh, you take six. Uh, liberating step. Okay. Uh, you take six points of slashing damage, reduced to uh, reduced to one, and you take two points of cold damage, which is negated entirely. Okay. 
Lucky these crits have been really bad damage rolls so far. <laughs> uh, okay, end of the skeleton's turn. Uh, we're back around to Rokar. And uh, he looks at the two of you and he just says, Well, seems your friend's gone again. Just give up already, why don't you? Um, and he sort of clutches his hand towards his holy symbol of Norgaba. Um, sort of mutters something under his breath um, and then the whole area around all of you uh, goes pitch black it, it already had done so for Otto <laughs> <laughs> there we go uh, yeah um, and Olwyn with your, with your recognised spell feat uh, you mm -hmm. recognise that Rokar has just cast darkness Right. Um, and then There's no save against that, is there? There is not any save against that. Um, and, um, yeah, then you hear the sound of footsteps, and Brother Amos, you feel um, someone moving past you. Uh, but that is the end of Rokar's turn. Uh, Olwyn, we're round to you. Uh, you are you. You can't see anything. It's like it's a bit like you've just suddenly gone blind. Okay. Um. um so first action will be to command Chardonnay to attack Rokar. Now Chardonnay has the scent. Right. Okay. Uh, so once again, I really should have looked this up because it's probably going to become relevant. Uh, sense and imprecise sense, isn't it? It is imprecise, yes. So mechanically, how does that work? Oh, that's right. That makes it hidden ra rather than rather than undetected. Uh, uh, sure, okay. Uh, Chardonnay can give me a perception roll. Okay. Uh, 13. 13. Um, Chardonnay has a vague idea of where Rokar is. Uh, not from, uh, she, uh, Sorry, he, he knows which direction Rokar went, but he doesn't know how far away he is. Okay. Um... And I'm guessing that's an action to determine that. Uh, no, I'm going to say that's that, that's free because it's like the scent ability. Okay. Um, so presumably Chardonnay would move to where he thinks Rokar might be then? Okay. How far do you want Chardonnay to move in that direction? Um... Well, would it be possible for Chardonnay just to uh, use an action to move up to 40 feet until he bumps into someone? Uh, yes, you can absolutely have him do that. And Char Chardonnay sort of moves in the vague direction that Rokar went. Uh, 5 feet, 10 feet, 15, 25. Uh, so just as Chardonnay um, sort of finishes moving uh, his full 40 feet, um, Chardonnay pops out of this bubble of darkness um, and uh, sort of finds himself once again standing on top of an unconscious Otto. Uh, Rokar is directly in front of him. Okay, uh, next action will be to attack then. Okay. Uh, so, oh, that's pretty good. Uh, 25. That's gonna hit. Roll some damage for Chardonnay. Good, oh. Uh, six points of damage. Okay, six points of damage. Uh, with Alwyn's two remaining actions, uh, will you have heard this? 
Uh, yes, you've heard that, um, you heard sort of a snapping and a snarling. Can I run in the direction of the snapping and snarling? Uh, you can. Um, Owen, give me a reflex save. Okay. Uh. Oh, shit. Ten. Ten. Uh, you begin rushing directly in this direction, um, forgetting for a moment that there is a table in the way, and you collide very painfully with the table. Ouch. Uh, do I take anything? Uh, you don't take any damage, um, but that is going to count as a move action. Okay, uh, for my final action, I'll keep moving in that general same direction. All right, are you being a bit more careful about it, or are you attempting the same speed? No, I'll attempt the same speed. Okay, um, give me another reflex saving throw. Uh, 25. That's Much fine. better. Uh, this time, you you sort of fumble around the edge of edge of edge of the table, um, come within inches of colliding with bro- with Brother Amos. Um, you sort of have a very awkward moment where you're your nose to nose, just kind of looking into each other's eyes. Under different <laughs> cir- <laughs> under different circumstances, it might even be romantic. <laughs> uh, but you do nonetheless manage to move past it. Sorry, move past Brother Amos. Five, ten, twenty. Um, and you find you can't get uh, your full movement because just past Brother Amos, um, you, in a similar fashion, come face to face with one of these skeletons. Okay. That's my move. Hold on to this, Alwyn. It's the banister. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, and they say romance is dead. <laughs> We're round to Brother Amos. Uh, um, uh, would a torch have any effect with this? Uh, you don't know. I don't know. You, you could try. I'm going to. I'm going to get out my torch and see if it works. Then. Okay. Uh, you take out a torch and you strike it with your tinder, and it bursts and bursts into flame. Um, but it's weird. Although you can see the flame burning in your hand. Um, all around the torch, uh, there is still just this pitch inky blackness. That didn't work. Uh, you've got two actions left. Um, I, I, th- I think... I think I'll follow Alwyn. He seems to be going in the right direction. Okay. Uh, Maybe. You turn uh, to move in the same direction as Alwyn, and you find Alwyn um, literally kind of almost right next to you. Oh. Um, I don't know what you think we should do, Alwyn. I can't see anything. Punch the skeleton. Just, are we next to a skeleton? Uh, you do recall there was a skeleton there. Uh, you can't see it, but it did hit you the last time. Last time out. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll... I'll um flail wildly into the darkness with a flurry of blows. Uh, So, um, before you roll those attacks, roll a d20 for me. A one. A one. Uh, So your first strike, um, you send it into the darkness and it comes into nothing whatsoever. Um, Again, roll a d20 before your second attack. 12. 12. Uh, this time, um, sort of roughly remembering where the skeleton was, uh, you lunge forward and this time you do connect. Roll that attack. Twelve. Twelve. Uh, yeah, you, you, you strike the skeleton, uh, but you don't have sort of caught off guard by the fact that you couldn't see it beforehand. Um, you strike it, but you don't get any momentum in the blow. Uh, one action left, Brother Ramos. Uh, a powerful fist. Okay, again, give me a d20. 14. 14, and yes, you may roll that attack. Eight. Uh, eight is not going to miss. Again, uh, there's something 
otherworldly and resilient about these creatures. Uh, your strikes are, don't seem to be having much of an impact. Uh, end of Amos's turn. We are round to Otto. Uh, Otto, I need a recovery check, please. And what do I throw? A d20. Uh, it's, it's a d20. Um, you're in the hands of fate, so you add nothing to it. You're trying to beat... Um, you've gone down... You're trying to beat 11. Is that... It doesn't toughness... Uh, yes, there. but he's been down, so uh, his wounded condition increases. Right. I threw a 10. Okay, that is a failure, Otto. Mm. Uh, please make a note that you are dying 3. Dying 3. Actually, no, uh, that's a lie. You're dying too. Oh, that's a relief. <laughs> yeah. That's much better. That's 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 where I got it good. wrong. Um, that's what I got wrong when uh, when Vo died uh-huh. in our in our social game. So yeah, you're dying too, but you're also wounded too. Mm, wounded too. Okay. Uh, you're not uh, stunned anymore, though. I'm not stunned. I got I got over that. I got over being stunned. <laughs> Uh, we they are, just need to get over yeah. dying. And being shocked and surprised and stunned. We <laughs> uh, we're round to the two skeletons. Um, actually, let's first do that. Okay. Uh, Okay, Brother Amos, you feel um, a flurry of wind as the claws of this skeleton go whooshing past your face um, once again. Uh, although one of them does get through. Uh, I've got a 19 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Okay. Uh, Brother Amos, you take five points of slashing damage and a further three liberating points of step. damage. Okay. Um, just check something, liberating step. Do you have to be able to see them? Or does it I don't say within range? recall having read that, um, but I can double check. Uh, and enemy damages, grabs or grapples, and both are within 15 feet. Yeah. Yeah, don't see why not. Uh, so it's actually two points of slashing damage, Brother Amos, and you do not take the cold damage. Okay. Okay. Uh, the other skeleton... Um, Although you can't see it, you can hear sort of the shambling of bone as it moves, uh, supposedly moves up the stairs. Um, And we're round to Rokar's turn. Uh, So Chardonnay will see Rokar uh, continue to move down the stairs. Um, Chardonnay sees him move over to... um, the bandit who was holding the crossbow when the three of you came into the lodge um, and Chardonnay will see Rokar kneels down um, and touches the bandit on the, on, on his face and uh, he says uh, you serve me in life now serve me again um, there's a wave of black energy drifts off of Rokar um, and uh, the sound of a very agonal breath um, from this bandit before uh, they lie still. Um, but that is the end of Rokar's turn. Uh, Olwyn, we're round to you. Quick question, technically. Uh, so is there a verbal component to that spell, or was he just saying it for, for flavour? <laughs> uh, uh, it probably does have a verbal component. Most spells do. If, if there is a verbal component, would Alwyn recognise what he's doing from his recognised spell? Oh, good question. Um, recognised spell's a champion feat. It is. I think it says you have to see the casting. Um, but... I'll tell you what, just for the hell of it, you can give me a perception check, Alwyn. Okay. Mm-hmm. 23. 23, okay. Uh, You did indeed hear him say this. Um, And whilst you couldn't see the spell, to be sure, um, a couple of the the vowels he was intoning um, sounded very much like like the spell Death Knell. Mm, Right. I think he's creating another one of these things. Um, 
Amos, if you've got a healing potion on you, maybe you could pour it down Otto's throat. Because um, I've got nothing. I don't, I don't have anything. Oh dear. Um. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Uh, so first action uh, will be to call out to Chardonnay. Um... Get the bad man! Get the bad man! Go on! Um, so, uh, how, how far away is Rokar from Chardonnay? Uh, Rokar is less than a move away. Okay, uh, so Chardonnay will make one move to get up to Rokar and a second move, a uh, second action to attack. Alright. Uh, Double checking. Yep. Uh, 16. 16 is not enough. Let me put it. As, as Chardonnay bounds down down the stairs, uh, Rokar sort of looks up, finishing up whatever he was doing, um, and is able uh, just sort of places a kick at Chardonnay's muzzle and just just stays her off. Oh, the bastard. Um, Him off. Sorry. He's he's yeah. He's not a nice person at all. Um. Okay and. Uh, can I actually see the skeleton in front of me then? Uh, no, you can't. That that was more for the flavour of you flailing through the darkness. You're still in the okay. darkness. Okay. Um, but I'm aware there's a skeleton in front of me, am I? Uh, well, there certainly was. You, it, it could have moved, you don't know. But there certainly okay. was the last time you checked. I'm going to attempt to make a strike with the spear. Okay. Uh, roll. Uh, so roll a d21 first. Okay. Uh, eight. Okay, roll the attack. Uh, does Bane count on the skeletons or just Rokar? Uh, interestingly enough, um, that effect, that that kind of oppression in your mind uh, seems to have lifted. Okay. Uh, that's 15 then. Okay. 15 uh, is not enough to hit. Okay. And my final action, I'll attempt to hit again. Okay. Uh, he wants another d20, presumably. Uh, yes, please. Uh, three. Uh, that is a complete miss. Uh, you thrust in the first time. Uh, you think perhaps, oh no, it's not there. Perhaps it's a bit more, more to the left. And you, you, you lunge forward. And again, you find yourself hitting nothing but air. And that's a bad miss. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, end of your turn, Orwin. We're round to Brother Amos. I'm going to flail at the skeleton again. Okay, d20 <coughs> before each of your attacks. Okay. So 19. Uh, yes, and then roll, roll attack. Fifteen. Uh, Fifteen is okay. Uh, so your first strike... Uh, sorry, both of those strikes hit. Sorry, no, that's... A, both of those strikes can be made, so make, make your attacks. My attacks or my damage? Uh, attacks. 28. 28. Oh, oh, uh, so yeah, 28. Your first strike is a critical hit there, Brother Amos. Sweet. Yay. Mm. Liberating step. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, and the second one. Nineteen. Uh, yep, that's enough to hit. So you got a critical hit and a regular hit. Okay, critical hit damage. Eight. Okay, is that uh, is that doubled already? Doubled already. Do I double it for a critical? Uh, yes. So w with a critical hit, you roll ro roll the damage and add your strength, and then yeah. you double what you get. Uh, so it was sixteen then. Sixteen. Uh, so actually, this first strike. Um, you hammer in with the fist um, and there is a crunching as you feel bone break beneath your fist um, and then there is uh, a sort of whooshing noise as, as wind seems to swirl uh, followed by a, quite a loud crack um, let's have reflex saves from Alwyn and Brother Amos please okay. is this a save against a spell because it's I have divine growth it's not a spell okay uh, 10. 
18. Okay. 18. All right. Uh, so, Brother Amos, you uh, sort of feel this uh, this cold blast of cold air wash out. Uh, oh, Brother Amos, uh, you take one point of cold damage. Mm -hmm. And Olwyn, you also take one point of cold damage. Oh, okay. Because it rolled a one on its d6. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, you've still got uh, two actions there, Brother Amos. Um, I didn't, with my flurry of blows, they both hit, but I only rolled one lot of damage. Uh, so that's because your first strike destroyed, destroyed the skeleton. Ah, right, okay. Um, so two actions left, you say? That's correct. I kind of want to make my way in the vague direction of Rokar. Okay. Uh, sure thing. Uh, so, kind of follow, follow the sounds of the footsteps and stuff. Um, again, you start moving in that direction. Uh, give me a reflex saving throw as you do so. 20. 20. Uh, yeah, you sort of, sort of having, having heard the various thuds and thonks of Elwyn trying to make his way through, uh, you reach out, feel for the edge of the table, and you use that to trace your way around. 10, 15. And you move... Uh, sort of 15 feet um, in the direction of where you think the door was and you pop out of this sphere of darkness. Uh, you can see Otto lying face down at the top of the stairs and you can see uh, Rokar fending off Chardonnay at the base of the stairs. And I've got an action left? Uh, you have. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to use that action to shout over to Alwyn. Follow my voice. All right, okay. Uh, so we're back around to Otto. Uh, Otto, mm. you're still unconscious. I need you to give me another recovery check. 19. There we go. Uh, you're back down to dying one. <laughs> Yay! Okay. Still unconscious. Still unconscious, but not uh, not as close to death. As still, close, but still pretty close to death. Rallying slightly. <laughs> Less close to death than I was. It's now a skeleton's turn. Let's see if it can... They're going to come and stamp on me. Orwin, <laughs> uh, kind of off to your left, um, you hear um, some shuffling and some clonking um, as uh, you hear the sound of bone hitting into wood. Uh, it's probably safe to assume that the skeleton is also lost in this darkness. Temporarily. Good. Uh, end of the skeleton's turn. We're back round to Rokar, uh, who finishes up what he was doing, um, turns back round to Chardonnay, um, and uh, he, call, he calls out quite quite audibly. You get the sense he might be trying to goad you at this point, Orwin. Um, he says, uh, I will put this mangy muck down if it is the last thing I do. And he's going to make a strike towards him with his short sword. Uh, 28 to hit. 28 is a critical hit. Okay, Chardonnay takes 8 points of slashing damage as Rokar carves into him. Chardonnay is very simply down. Okay. Uh, Rokar then strides back up the stairs towards you, Brother Ramos. Uh, sort of gets halfway back up the stairs. Uh, sort of again face to face with you and then he sort of brings his sword round in a wide arc and goes for a slash against you he goes for a slash against me I mean, that's, that <laughs> he, is out of order he, he unzips his trousers <laughs> <laughs> and you feel, a, you feel a slight warm sensation there we go and he slashes at you uh, ooh 18 to hit um, uh, I see he's 19 there you go. So he again, he's telegraphing this a little bit too much, and the sword goes under your arm. Uh, Orwin, we're round to you. Right. Um, so, do I need to make a roll for Chardonnay's dying condition? 
Uh, y- we'll do that at the end of your turn. At the end of the turn, okay. Uh, so the first action will be to move in the direction of Amos's voice. Okay, uh, sure thing. Uh, sort of this time, kind of feeling along the wall, um, you are able to move without colliding with the furniture. And kind of as you come through the door of the office, uh, you pop back out into into being able to see again. Uh, you can see that Otto is 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 on the ground directly in front of you, uh, and Amos is sort of going toe to toe with with Rokar on the stairs. Okay. Um... I want to spend an action going through Otto's pack to see if I can find any healing potions. Okay, you do so. Otto, do you have any healing potions? I think I do. Oh no, I think I used it up. I had um, I had an any, adventurer's pack. Any elixirs of life? Um, motorbikes? <laughs> motorbikes. Um... No, I don't have an elixir of life. I thought okay. I did, but uh, okay. Uh, no. Orwin, you you rifle through Otto's pack, um, and if if Otto does have anything like that, uh, he's got it well hidden away. And there are places I'm not investigating. Um, Do not check his present pocket. My my <laughs> life is at <laughs> stake here. <yeah. laughs> Prison pocket. Uh, <laughs> I was getting very visibly shaken and upset. Um, and you hear him start to say, not again, not again. Not this again. Um, and final action, am I in range to stick Rokar with the spear? Uh, the spear's range is 10 feet, isn't it? It is, yes. Uh, not quite. You could hit Otto or Brother Ramos, but not, not Rokar. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the options. Put me um. out of my misery. <laughs> uh, I want to move with it. I don't want to move right up next to Rokar, but I want to move to five feet away from Rokar. Uh, that's not really possible to do. Uh, the stairs themselves are sort of a five foot wide choke point. Can I stand? Can I go behind Amos? I'll tell you what, I will let you use your last action um, essentially to drag Otto back and sta- and take his place okay yeah I'll do that then please alright um, we're round to brother Amos <clears throat> flurry of blows roll those attacks Sixteen, 24 is going to hit Two is not going to It's a miss anyway. It's a miss, yeah. Uh, so damage. First one. Seven. Seven points of damage. Uh, so you see, as you drive your fist into him, uh, you do see that some of the injuries that you dealt to him previously uh, had closed up a little bit. You're not entirely sure how. Um, but either way, you strike him again, and there's a gout of blood as you strike him. Uh, two actions left, Brother Ramos. Powerful fist. Okay. Eight. Eight is going to miss. Same again. Powerful fist. Okay. Hmm. Eighteen. Am I deducting eight this time? Ah, yes. Minus eight. Mm. Eighteen. Eighteen is is a miss, unfortunately. You you strike him once and go for, and he sort of staggers back, reeling. Uh, you sort of push forward in, in an attempt to finish him off. Uh, but uh, although you've you, you've got you, you've got got the high ground, um, it's quite easy for him to sort of duck and dodge out of the way of your strikes. He takes the last one uh, in the thick of his shoulder with his thick fur coat, and and, and laughs again. <laughs> you can't do nothing to me, boy. Oh, getting right on my tits. All right. Uh, end of your turn, Brother Ramos. We're round to Otto. I need another recovery check, please. Twelve. Oh, that is just a success. Uh, Otto, your breathing stabilises, and uh, 
I'm no longer dying? You are no longer dying. However, you are now wounded too. Uh, we didn't make the recovery check for Chardonnay. We didn't. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, do you want to make that now for me, Owen? 15. 15. Chardonnay, um, although there's kind of blood everywhere, um, her, his breathing stabilises and Chardonnay just kind, just kind of lies there, sort of breathing very, very shallowly. So zero hit points, wounded one? That's correct. Uh, obviously, Alwyn won't be aware of this. Okay. Um, round two, the frost skeleton. <laughs> and you, you hear some more clunking and bashing of furniture as this thing sort of scrabbles around very uselessly uh, in the pitch black office of, of Rokar. Do we hear the Benny Hill tune faintly? <laughs> <laughs> if you listen closely enough, it does sound like that's what it's making. <laughs> Please, donk, please, donk, please, please donk, 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 clink, clonk, smash. <laughs> uh, we are back round to Rokar, and uh, he looks at you, Brother Amos, and he says, um, Right, I think you've had your fun. Time to get out of my way. Um, brandishes his short sword, which he's going to swing towards you. Uh, we've got an 18 to hit. That's a miss to miss uh, and uh, goes for another strike uh, 17 to hit it's a miss. There's, a, there's definitely an air of frustration and perhaps a tiny hint of desperation uh, in his actions at the moment you're not too sure uh, he's just going to go for a third strike and that misses completely so it sort of works in for, for, in for three strikes with a short sword um, and this time the height advantage does give you give you an edge you're able to, to to parry one to the side step definitely out of the way of the third and the, uh, the second of the third um you deliver a jab with your foot into his sternum to kind of knock him backwards a tiny bit um we're round to Alwyn. so how close am i to rokar uh you point? are so it's brother amos between you and rokar you're 10 feet from him right and it's a narrow corridor so i can't go to the side of Brother Amos, is that correct? That's correct. I mean, you could, but that would mean jumping off the balcony. No, um, not willing to do that. Um, so obviously, if I'm behind Amos, Amos won't see this, but um, there is a fire in Alwyn's eyes that uh, certainly mm -hmm. his companions have never seen before, and an anger, a, a hatred almost. Um, and Alwyn mutters to himself, in the name of Caden, Kalian, you will not take my French from me again. And he thrusts forward with the spear at Roka. All right. Um, I tell you what, Alwyn, as this is clearly such an emotional moment for him, um, I am going to allow you to have advantage on this roll. Thank you. Uh, so the first one is 16. It's a miss. Uh, the second one is 17. Uh, that is also a miss. Okay. Um, I mean, the emotions can get in the way as well. <laughs> they can indeed. <laughs> uh, second action. Attempt another attack. Uh, for seven. Um, third one, which is obviously going to need a natural 20 to do anything. But is a four. No. No. Yeah, um, perhaps it's because you haven't felt this anger in such a long time, Alwyn. Um, mm. Alwyn goes to thrust his spear towards Rokar. As he does so, his arm is shaking like a leaf. Uh, mm. Brother Amos, you see this spear sort of flashing past you, and you sort of turn to see... Um, uh, oh, yeah, that you, you can see the fury in Alwyn's eyes. You can see uh, that there's a few tears streaking down his face as he struggles to land blows anywhere near Rokar. I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> uh, end of your turn, Alwyn. We're round to Brother Amos. Oh, uh, mm. a flurry of blows. Robbers attacks. 27. 27's going to hit. Twelve. 12's going to miss. Damage. 
five. Five points of damage. Five points of damage, yeah. Okay. Uh, you drive forward with your foot and you catch him on, on, on the knee, which is sort of stiffens for a second. Uh, he's looking really quite hurt at this point, Brother Ramos. Powerful fist. Okay, roll the attack. 24. 24. Uh, 20, 20, sorry. Minus. Uh, 20 is a miss, unfortunately. Oh, and I mean, at, at this point, it's just a powerful fist again. Okay, roll the attack. Uh, that's a miss. All right. Uh, again, uh, you're in a very precarious situation where you are. You can't, y y you're each trying to get a good angle on each other, but you can't quite get there. Um, and your attacks go wide, unfortunately. Uh, Brother Ramos, that's the end of your turn. Uh, Otto, we're round to you. Mm. Uh, you are unconscious at zero hit points. Um, that is the end of your turn. Sorry. <laughs> that saved me throwing the dice. Neil got all excited and picked up his... <laughs> I did, I did. I picked, up his, I picked up his D20. And and roll the dice to see whether he soiled himself or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. It's, it's, um, Whilst he's unconscious. That's a four, so that's a yes, I think. <laughs> okay. Uh, from the office, you hear more clattering and banging as a, a, a bone crunching into furniture as this skeleton uh, just wanders around in the dark. And Rokar looks at you, bro bro Brother Ramos, uh, sort of looks past over Olwyn, and he, say, he says, uh, Ah, seems I've touched a nerve. Um, he goes to strike you, Brother Ramos, with his short sword. Uh, 24 to hit. Liberating step. Okay, he carves into you with his sword, um, and Olwyn, again, with this, with this fury in his eyes and sadness, uh, blocks it with a bit of magic. Um, although Rokar hits you, Brother Ramos, you take no damage from that attack. Oh. Uh, and you see, uh, as this happens, uh, a full fury bursts into Rokar's eyes. Um, he grips his sword with, with renewed vigour, um, a similar black and red energy that you've seen before uh, curls off and around it and he goes for another strike with a mighty cry of rage. Ah! Do I know what that is from Recognize Spell? Um, yes, it's, it's the harm spell, but it's not being used in a way that you're familiar with. Okay. Um, oh shit, and we've got a 14 to hit, so... His anger gets the better of him, and the sword swooshes harmlessly past you, Brother Ramos. I give him a little cheeky little wink. <laughs> okay, Olwyn, we're round to you. Uh, same anger. He's just going to try and shove the spear in Rokar's face. Okay, roll the attack. Natural 20. Okay. Oh. Uh, Olwyn, tell me how you finish off Rokar Syndrome of Rokar Ex Raiders. Exactly as I say, with a glare and a fire in his eyes, he lines up the spear, focuses, and plunges it straight into his eye and out uh, the other side. And as you do so, you thrust... For you watch him sort of swing this mad desperate swing towards brother Amos and you flick the spear in your hand and you drive it at just the right second and for a split second as um, you before before it makes contact uh, Rokar makes eye contact with you um, there is a flicker of surprise in his eyes um, and, as, and as he locks eyes with you um, his mouth curls into that characteristic sneer of his, and uh, you're not sure, but he's, but you swear he 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 mouths mouths to to, to you, Alwyn. Um, fair enough. Um, but a second later, it's uh, all for naught as the spear plunges through his through his eye, through his skull, out the back, in a splatter of blood and gore. Um, the body of Rokar staggers for a second uh, before stumbling off to his left. Uh, you see it break through uh, the banister of the staircase and crashes to the ground with a thud. And that is where we're going to end for the session, folks. Mm. Wow. 
sense. That, that was a hmm. nice bit of murder, Alan. I'm sorry, I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Tales from the Twenty Side is a Fiegel Films production in association with Juicy Falls. Music by Nazar Ryback from Hooksounds.com. Editing by Stu Jackson. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram by searching Tales from the Twenty Side or by visiting TalesFromTheTwentySide.com. <laughs>